Now, Tim, we are tracking some light snow, which is going to work in later on tonight. I'll have those details. Plus, an area tow truck driver has some advice for staying safe on wintry roads. And Upland police search for a vehicle they say hit a pedestrian, then fled the scene. The four states most watched news starts now. Wintry weather hits the four states with a mix of rain and snow. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. Let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Yeah, uh, we've had uh, quite a bit of rain, most of us, earlier today. And then really uh, north of I-44, very slushy snow and sleet this morning. But we did officially in Joplin, picked up about a, a quick half inch, melted. Pretty much everybody's melted. But roads right now, wet, but not snow packed. But we are going to have some slippery streets as we get into the morning hours. Look at our almanac today, 45. That was early this morning, and then we sat kind of upper 30s to near 40 most of the day. We're in the upper 30s right now, but eventually once the snow works in, our temperatures will drop. Winter weather advisory in effect, uh, Kansas, sliver of Oklahoma, northwest Arkansas, uh, and this is going to be for the light snow, which is going to start to work in as we go into the morning hours. It's the backside of the storm here, and it's going to pivot through during the morning. Accumulations are going to be minor, but of course, we're going to break that all down for you here in just a bit. See you soon. As the wintry weather moves in, driving could become treacherous. Kay Williams, at least know he spoke with a local tow truck driver to get some tips. As lower temperatures and snow hit parts of southeast Kansas and southwest Missouri, drivers should be on alert for dangerous road conditions. According to KDOT, a crash involving snow and ice happens every 2.87 hours in wintry weather conditions. Usually during the first winter weather event that we have, uh, we see an increase in slide offs, crashes, things like that. People just uh, maybe forgot about the safety tips that uh, they practiced the previous year. Jay Size, owner of Jay's Towing in Columbus, Kansas, is preparing for an uptick in tow calls for the week ahead. The multiple days is what does it. Most people around here, we don't get snow all frequently. Size has been in the towing business for nine years and says most accidents he sees during the winter time can be avoided. Pretty much everything could be prevented. But Sai says drivers need to be extra careful while on overpasses and bridges. The bridge with the wind howling like it is today could be extremely slick. So braking and accelerating on this bridge, it'd be real easy to turn the vehicle sideways and uh, have issues. Bridges get icier faster than roads because they have cold air above them and below them as well. We know that the potential with any precipitation of the roadways getting slick is, is high. And so we're preparing just so we can have an adequate response to uh, those that do slide off or get involved in crashes. And we just want motorists to be cognizant of that and watch their speed, allow further distance from the vehicle they're following, always buckle up and, and just try to stay safe. In Cherokee County, Kansas, Elise Snowy, KOM News. Both Sizes and the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office advise those out on the roads to drive at slower speeds, keep a safe distance between you and the car ahead of you, and of course, stay off your phone. Joplin police are searching for a vehicle they say hit a pedestrian, then fled the scene. It happened around 6 p.m. this evening near West 7th and Gray Avenue. Authorities say a female pedestrian was hit by a dark colored SUV. First responders found her lying in the road unresponsive and rushed her to the hospital. If you have any information, you are asked to contact Joplin Police. Some drivers in Newton County, Missouri might have to find a different route in the coming months. Beginning Monday, January the 15th, MoDOT will begin work on a dual lane roundabout as well as make intersection improvements at Hammer Road just east of I-49. Drivers should be aware of crews and equipment working close to traffic and to expect occasional lane restrictions. Completion is scheduled for November 1st of this year. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly today partnered with a bipartisan group of two dozen state lawmakers to announce a tax reform bill. The proposal would immediately eliminate the state's sales tax on groceries rather than waiting until 2025. The state's tax on Social Security benefits would also be eliminated. 
It would also create a four-day back-to-school sales tax holiday every August and increase standard deductions for state income taxes. It would last for three years and is projected to save a total of $1 billion. Quapaw Public Schools are trying to stay ahead of their growth through a bond that approved additional seating in the gym, but at the cost of the girls' weight room. The weight room is set to close in two months after the last basketball game. Seeing the pending lack of resources for the sports community, the Community Boosters came up with a plan. We will match anything that is given. We've already matched about half of that, about 2,500. So um, we are actually have raised um, right at $17,000 so far to go towards the project. Without that for the girls, it just kind of, where, like, where are we supposed to get better and get faster and get stronger if we have nowhere to work out? The next fundraiser is the Dancing with the Stars competition. That's going to be on February 10th. The Parsons, Kansas Police Department will hold a memorial service for a fallen canine dog. Canine Karam died in August while off duty with the Parsons Police Department. An investigation found canine Karam's handler failed to provide reasonable care to remove him from the severe summer heat. The public is invited to attend the memorial service on Wednesday, January 31st at noon at Municipal Auditorium, Cream's handler was fired and a criminal charge was requested for animal neglect. That case is in the hands of the county attorney. Cherokee County Sheriff's Office is celebrating the retirement of one of its canine officers. Canine Keo served the Sheriff's Office for seven years with his handler, Sergeant Chris Wren. Keo earned his certification from the North American Police Working Dog Association. During his service, Keo aided in fugitive apprehensions, the discovery of illegal narcotics, and also helped with anti-drug presentations at area schools. Kids in Fort Scott got a chance to bring robots to life. The Fort Scott Public Library hosted the event featuring a variety of robots connected to tablets that kids could interact with and even code themselves to change their behavior. Officials say it's a great way for students to learn valuable skills. I think the more that a child is fluent in those machines under a regulated environment, or, you know, adult supervision, the more they benefit from it. It feels natural to them, so when they have to pick it up in a classroom setting, then they're ready to go. <laughs> Kids also got to add on to a sticker mosaic and they could help with the library's newsletter. Later in sports, the Gorillas coaching staff gets a little deeper. John introduces us to the latest PSU football coach who might need very little introduction, but up first. A powerful explosion in a historic building. I'm Jason Allen in Fort Worth, Texas. I'll show you the damage from the blast that sent debris flying for blocks here in the city's downtown website to find out how you can save thousands on your new home at Creekside in Carthage. Fire officials say some kind of a gas explosion rocked a downtown Fort Worth, Texas hotel today, injuring about 21 people and shocking that entire city. Reporter Jason Allen has the latest. The huge blast at a historic hotel filled downtown Fort Worth streets with large chunks of the building and other debris. Dozens of firefighters responded to the area Monday afternoon, helping transport the injured to nearby hospitals. This is still a very active scene. The Sandman Signature Hotel is more than a century old and in a busy part of the city, about a block from the Fort Worth Convention Center. Again, we, we have not made a 100% determination, but we wanted to make it clear that this was some type of gas explosion. Uh, and we're still working on the, the details of that to figure out what, what all caused that. Firefighters had to make their way through destroyed drywall, broken glass, and twisted metal that covered the street outside the 245-room hotel. Other nearby businesses were also damaged in the blast. At one point, there was a fire inside the building, which firefighters put out. Police taped off the area as response teams searched the wreckage. Officials say a restaurant in the building had been under construction, but said it was not definitive that that's where the blast occurred. Jason Allen, CBS News, Fort Worth, Texas. In 1979, that hotel was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Sites collecting blood across the four states and the nation are participating in a unique incentive program for blood donors. 
The Red Cross and the National Football League have joined forces as the nation faces the lowest number of blood donors in decades. Anyone who gives blood, platelets, or plasma in January through the Red Cross will automatically be entered for a chance to win a trip for two to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. To find information on area sites and to make an appointment, go to this story on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Carthage School District announces a student at Steadley Elementary has a confirmed case of Neisseria meningitis. The district is working with the Jasper County Health Department to take necessary precautions, including a deep cleaning of the school and contact tracing. Officials say if a child shows symptoms, including fever, headaches, stiff neck, rash, or anything unusual, people should seek medical attention, officials say. No, do not go to the ER seeking antibiotic prophylaxis. A new study finds even a modest increase in out-of-pocket costs for HIV prevention medications could jeopardize progress to slow HIV infections in the U.S. PrEP medications are highly effective at preventing the virus and are currently free under almost all health insurance plans. Researchers from UPenn and Johns Hopkins found raising the cost to just $10 would double the rate of prescriptions going unfilled, eventually leading to a rise in new infections. A little later, some call today Black Monday in professional football. John's going to have details on this less than welcome day for some coaches. Plus, uh, we're going to welcome in some uh, light snow for the morning hours. We're going to be talking about that coming up. Your home this winter at Miami Fireplace and Stoves. Hey, of course, we had snow and sleep most of us during the morning hours and then it mixed with and changed back to rain by late morning and then mainly just rain throughout the afternoon. A lot of areas picked up some decent amounts. Even in Joplin, we picked up about an inch of rain, which is great. Something we definitely need. All right, Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Uh, we are seeing the roads are wet downtown. You can see the flags blowing a little bit. So those winds are going to start to pick up. Winter weather advisory, uh, most of southeast Kansas, even a sliver of northeastern Oklahoma, Missouri and Arkansas. This is going to last until tomorrow late afternoon. All right, rainfall, look at this. So where you see the darker greens, closer to an inch, which we need because we've been in a drought really for the past couple years. All right, so here's the front half of this system. Gave us all the rain. Here's the back half, and this is going to pivot through late tonight into tomorrow morning. You can see where it is snowing, Eureka, Yates Center, Iola, and it's going to be these areas that pick up the higher accumulations than once you get Fredonia, Chanu, Iola, and Yates Center for you tonight. But look at this upper level low. It's going to track right on top of us. So when it does track on us, it takes that heavier band of snow about 100 miles to the north. That's what we're going to see as we go through the overnight hours. Let me stop 3 o'clock in the morning. We'll start to see a little bit of rain picking up quickly switching over to snow, moderate snow. Once it switches over, this band rotates in the southwestern Missouri 5, 6 a.m. So we should start the day with some snow, light snow through the morning. Here's mid morning at about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Notice the temperatures 32, 31, 32. So most likely this is going to stick to the roads. Uh, again, it's going to be light but it will stick to the roads. Let's move to about shortly before the noon hour tapering Kansas, Oklahoma, still light snow in southwestern Missouri, and then snow starts to exit by one, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. All right, not a lot of snow, but still it's going to cause some issues. Two to four, Yates Center, and this is additional snow. Two to four, Yates Center, Fredonia, Chanute, Iola. One to two, um, really Nevada, Lamar, Fort Scott. I think Pittsburgh will be closer to one, one and a half. Joplin probably one, maybe one and a quarter. Dusting to an inch. Northeast Oklahoma, extreme southwest Missouri, and also northern parts of Arkansas. So our weather impacts, we're going to put a high impact for wind because we're going to have winds gusting near 40 miles per hour. Moderate impact for cold, low for ice, moderate on the roadways for snow. Day planner, temperatures stay cold. We hover near freezing. Check out these wind gusts by morning, howling 35 upwards to 40 miles per hour. And we're not done. 
Here, just in a few days, we get another system. Look at this, a band of snow rotates in Thursday night into Friday, and this brings in an Arctic front, and oh my, it's gonna get cold as we go into the weekend. Alert day tomorrow, light snow, back to 47 on Wednesday. 53 Thursday, rain right back in. Snow Friday, possible alert day. Look at our high Saturday, 21. Chiefs play Saturday night after dark. Yeah. Temperatures are going to be hovering 0 to 10 degrees during that game. That would be really uncomfortable for a team that say, plays Miami, normally in Miami, Oakland, yeah. or Miami uh, Florida, <laughs> for sure. Thanks, Doug. Still have Michigan and Washington square off for the college football national championship. And Pitt State football brings on a familiar face as an assistant coach. John Dales has those stories and more up next. The second half off, only at Casey's. Just over a month after he's introduced as Pitt State's next head football coach, Tom Anthony completes his coaching staff for the 2024 season. This afternoon, the Gorilla is welcoming two final new members to their staff. One of those being a name that Gorilla Nation will remember quite well and probably hasn't forgotten. Trace Jeffries, who just finished his college playing career this year with PSU. He was an offensive lineman. He'll be an offensive graduate assistant under Anthony in 2024. And Jeffries was a three-time All-MIAA performer, a two-time Division II All-American. Here are all the additions that Anthony has made to his staff since being hired a month ago. Brian B.K. Smith, the second to be hired today along with Jeffries. He'll be the running backs coach and was the cornerbacks coach at Central Missouri this year. They join Bill and Kevin Blyle, Greg Hollins, Mark Smith, who comes to PSU from Frontenac, and Cody Williams as the other fresh faces on the Gorilla sidelines this upcoming season. Over to the NFL, as of late last night, we know what time all the games will be on Wild Card Weekend, including the Chiefs playing the Dolphins. Important for all of our viewers, the game won't be available through cable. It's exclusive to NBC's streaming app, Peacock. Game kicks off at 7 at Arrowhead. It's a rematch of the November 5th game in Germany. Kansas City beat Miami in that one, 21 to 14. And again, for our Chiefs fans, you get five days to work on this. Game only available through Peacock, not on any cable channels. Elsewhere throughout the NFL today, known as Black Monday, regular season ended last night. Coach firings often happen today. Falcons head coach Arthur Smith, he's one of them. Fired after three seasons, no playoff berths. The Commanders fire their head coach Ron Rivera after four years without a winning season. Those not the only two transactions made today. The Carolina Panthers fired their head coach midway through the year. Today they fire their general manager, Scott Fitterer. One of the bigger moves of the day, New York Giants defensive coordinator Wink Martindale. He resigns after three seasons with his position. He's likely to be a very highly sought after defensive coordinator, maybe even a head coach elsewhere in the league. Moves not exclusive just to the NFL today. The St. Louis Cardinals, their general manager John Mozeliak announces Heim Bloom is hired as advisor to president of baseball operations. Now Bloom served as the chief baseball officer for the Boston Red Sox from 2019 through this past season in 2023. He was fired by the team this September after they went five games over 500 in his time there. Finishing things up with the college football playoff tonight, the national championship, Michigan playing Washington in the final college football game until August. And the national title game just went final about 10 minutes ago. Michigan is the 2023-24 national champion. Wolverines with a wire-to-wire -wire victory over Washington tonight. They win it 34-13. Michigan rushes for 303 yards as a team. Jim Harbaugh leads his alma mater to a championship. And yes, as an Ohio State fan, it very much pains me to say the words that Michigan is the national champion. Not only the national champions, but they win by three touchdowns. Yes, yeah, dominant listen, tonight. I guess. We'll be right back. Feels good to be home. A four-state hero. 
Carthage woman, Kansas City Chiefs super fan, celebrated a big milestone. Helen Hubbard, you remember her? She turned 100 years old today, 104 years old today. Happy birthday, Helen. Family and friends from the community came out to celebrate with her on this very special day. It included music, a customized Chiefs cake, and some life advice. An attitude makes a big difference in your life. I just grew up thinking life was great all the time. I have ups and downs, but they can't rule your life. And I just had a happy life. And minded my family lived the best I could with the faith that I had. What a great woman. We've done a few stories with Helen over the years. You might recall them. You can check them out on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Among other things, we shot a Super Bowl promo with her four years ago when she was 100 years old. Young. That's right. Yeah, she's, she's just she's a great person. It's good to see her doing well. Absolutely. Um, the weather could be iffy in the morning. Yeah, we're going to have some light snow. We will have some road issues in the morning. Uh, it, most areas close to an inch. Some areas a little bit more than that. So an alert day. Uh, it melts Wednesday. Rain Thursday. Snow Friday. But look at our high on Friday. 28, then 21 Saturday. More snow Sunday. So whatever falls Friday and Sunday, is going to be sticking around a while. Mm, final sports note. We've had a couple of postponements with that weather for some mm -hmm. games going on in the area. If that doesn't happen, though, tomorrow, Fort Scott boys and girls basketball, each undefeated. They each play Pittsburgh on the road tomorrow. Okay. Please be careful out there, and let's make it a great tomorrow.